Okay, when we get this thing fired up, you're gonna come up with a profile list. This 48 volt is the only one that's uh, available to it. All right, guys, we got a different one today. We're gonna try to fix a car. Don't work our cars very often, but we have a uh, Kia Optima Hybrid that had uh, this is uh, a project we're going to try to fix. The hybrid battery showed up dead, so we have to get it charged just so we can get the system working again. So let's take a look at it. So it's a Kia Optima Hybrid. I think it's like a 09. Who really knows? So this is, of course, where the hybrid battery goes. I didn't show you how to take it out, but that's where it goes. Let's go take a look at it. Here I got it over here on the bench. I got the uh, charger hooked up. And we'll cover that in just a second. I do want to thank uh, a, a French YouTuber that kind of showed me how to do this, but I don't speak French, so... Uh, I just put together what I got, what I could get from his video. I'm um, trying to make an English one for everybody, because uh, charging these hybrid batteries doesn't. There's not a lot of options for us, especially on these lithium ions. <laughs> so obviously, I'm not a uh, automotive channel or a hybrid channel or an e, uh, EV channel. Uh, my background on lithium ion batteries is not very high. I only know. The basics of it because they are a battery and so they have cells just like a normal battery will have let's take a look it has nine cells one two three four five six seven eight nine nine cells each cell is, thir is uh, 30 volts so this is a 270 volt battery i did my math really easily so to get this charge back up i have to charge each cell individually to 30 volts and you can't just use any uh, battery charger you need to use a lithium ion uh, profile has a different profile than a normal lead acid or, or an ICOD battery and we don't want to start a fire so I'll show you how we got this set up so I removed the bus bars that go across right here so we can get access to each individual cell we don't want to try to charge every cell at once because uh, that would probably be impossible with this charger anyways now this is actually a, an e-bike battery charger is kind of like a universal battery charger it's grin I get this off of uh, Amazon it's a pretty spendy guy I think it's like 250 bucks but you can set up custom profiles on it the instructions for that are pretty useless uh, I'll try to see if I can explain it to you a little bit better they don't have a profile already programmed for 30 volts you have to set it up manually all right I guess powered up this unit and this is the cycle sater. What are we calling it? Universal battery charger from Grin. So there's not the instructions that come with this are kind of hard to figure out. So the only profile that's set up is for a 48 volt battery. So to go to the setup, you have to push and hold the two buttons to enter setup. There's only these two buttons right here. So it's complicated. The top button, if you push and hold it, is the back button. The bottom button, if you push and hold it, is the select button. So I'm going to select Edit Profiles and by holding it. And then I can go down to all the available profiles. I can activate these things. But I need a custom one because it has 48 volt lithium, lithium 85% charge, 52 volt lithium fast charge, standard charge, 85% charge, Lithium iron, fast charge, uh, 24 volt. So these are all the ones that come pre-programmed with it. But if I go up and I find it, I'll find it. I can create a new profile. So I'm gonna, just like it says, this bottom button hold to create. It's a lithium battery. So again, I wanna select that. So push and hold the bottom button. Now I need to change the voltage. So instead of 42 volts, it needs to be 30 volts. So push and hold that there. So 
Now the cursor is on the first number. I want it to be zero, so I'm pushing and hold the do on the next button. Now it's on four, so now I go up and down. So if I push that button, it goes five, down, now I'm down to three. Push and hold that, so I selected three. Now it's on the next one. Now I want to go down to 30. Okay, and then 30.0. Uh, the bulk amperage is it max out at four amps. I don't trust these wires to handle more than four amps, so. I'm gonna make it go down to uh, two amps. I'd rather uh, take a little bit longer to charge than uh, burn up any wires or anything. The complete, so that's like um, after the bulk, it, it's got a trickle start charge, uh, trickle start, trickle end, trickle amps, and then you save. So I'm gonna push and hold that and save that profile. And then it's gonna restart. So now on my profile list here, I have that the one that comes standard with it, number one. And if I go up, now I have custom lithium. So now I've set it up for my custom lithium for 30 volt, and I can go charge these, uh, these cells. These instructions did not explain how to do this very well. I hope this helps. Uh, right now I'm charging this first cell to 30 volts. It's doing a, a bulk charge and then it'll do a, a trickle charge after that point. You can kind of see its uh, profile going on right there and what's going on. I think it usually takes about 45 minutes to an hour to get this thing charged back up. And these are just tiny little wires. I, I maxed out the setting at two two amps to draw through so it started out at two amps you can go up to four amps on this but I don't trust my jumper leads to handle four amps even though the plug that it comes with is uh, the same size wires inside of it the plug that it comes with uh, is set up for like an e-bike charger so I just disassembled the plug and put jumper cables on it, it looks and how I had it what I found was black was negative and white was positive. Luckily on these cells are actually individually labeled negative and positive. And on this battery, these posts themselves are not the, the terminals. It's these uh, uh, flat blades. Those are the actual terminals. It's very strange. So right now I'm charging the first one. It's up to, I don't know, let's see what's going on. So if I were to check this thing out, I'm reading 29.74. And it's putting out 30. So we're pretty close. I trust this actually a little bit more than this. And uh, it's a good idea to be around it. Have a fire extinguisher ready. Uh, just in case. I've pretty much found that, uh, especially on the, I, I've changed out Prius batteries before. I know you'll see a lot of videos where people have great big, huge, high, high voltage rubber gloves, but I find those to be more dangerous than just using your brain. There's a, uh, a kill switch for it right here. It actually goes on the other side. Goes in right there. So with that pulled out, it actually interrupts. It's actually it's the jumper for these two cables right there. So it's literally disconnecting the battery. So after that, this battery is pretty much dead. These are the contactors, so you don't even have power here unless you actually had the, uh, the key on or the uh, car turned on. So as long as you use your uh, good judgment and don't start shorting each, uh, each cell out, it's basically just a, 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 a battery. Just respect it. With the big high, high voltage gloves, you can't hold on to a tool, and I think it causes more damage than, or more risk because you could drop a ratchet more easily that way. Anyways, end of my rant. All right, so we're back at the battery now. If I go back to DC voltage and I go to the next cell, which is here. At 27.3. So I just need to hook this up. So that's negative right there. And then hook this up to 
is what you're supposed to be doing with one hand all the time. Positive right here. Positive right there. So it won't do anything until you're hooked up to a battery. And I think if you have a reverse polarity, it'll let you know. So I'm going to go to that custom profile. So obviously, don't ever do a 45, 48 volt on a 30 volt uh, battery. So now I'm going to select that one, push and hold to start. So it's going to start charging. And there it's charging. Let me go back to this graph there. Gives you all the information. And so it's a cool little charger. I'm really thankful to those, uh, I believe they're French Canadians, that uh, maybe I should get their information and make a, tra uh, a, a card for it. And let's see, so we are charging. 17.5 or 27.5 so it is coming up and this will probably take another hour and 20 minutes hopefully when we come back this whole thing will be charged and then we can put it back together I personally think there's a lot more going on with this vehicle because we did charge up another battery we won't talk about that one and once we put it in it did fire up and I got everything to work and it would go into gear this engine was really really noisy and that traction battery went dead really quite quickly before we could even uh, get into it. So I think the charging si system has an issue on here. I'm not as familiar with uh, the Kia hybrid uh, drive system. I'm hardly familiar with the, to the Toyota hybrid drive system. So, but one thing at a time. All right, guys, I'm back at the shop. I think we got the last battery charged up. Let's see where we're at. I think it's charged. Charging complete. Let's go ahead and unplug this. And disconnect that. And there we go. And with that, all these battery cells are back charged up. Check our voltages on each cell. 30, 29, uh, 29, 29, 29, 29, 29. So they all read pretty well, even across the board. Uh, of course, that one was just charged. These were actually charged probably about four days ago. I just charged the last three cells today. So ideally, you should all do this in one day and balance it all out. But this is the only way I can figure out how to charge these things uh, using this uh, e-bike charger. So now that we just have to put it back together, each one of these needs to go on. What I would highly recommend you do before you put these back on is make sure that everything's lined up before you put it on. All right, let's get the last of these put on. And then we'll check our battery. Okay, so those are all put on now. So theoretically, right now, because the kill switch is out, which is right here. This is the jumper guy. See those two contacts right there? They go into the, the disable right there. So that's how you enable it. And really all it is is a jumper that connects these two right here. So right now, we currently have two batteries. We have a one, two, three, four, four cell battery and a one, two, three, four, five cell battery. Both of those are in series, but they're not in series with each other. So this battery has a positive terminal there, and that's the negative. This is the positive, and that's the negative. But they're not hooked up to anything because that kill switch is out. So that's why this battery is technically dead because nothing's hooked up to it. If we were to check our voltages, let's see, four times 30 should be what, 120? It's always hard to do this with one hand. Let me get some jumper wires. Okay, this is a little bit dangerous. So right now we're at zero. I got the jumper on that lead right there hooked up to the other end of the lead. So I checked battery voltage here. That battery's reading 120 volts, so 
Right, let's move that jumper to the other side. Right, so that was on the four battery, or four cells. This is five cells on this side, so five times 30. Get this right. Uh, 150, just like I would have thought. Or 149.3. But if I were to try to go from this ground to that positive, it would read zero because this jumper is not in. And that's how the kill switch works. Which is why the battery is theoretically dead. So let's go ahead and get that jumper off of there. Get those covers snapped back on. So we go from an unsafe battery to a fairly safe battery once these covers are back on. Yeah. So there it's all put back together. So it's fairly safe now. Still is dead until we put this up. And if we did the math, 140 plus 100 and, uh, sorry, 150 plus 120 is 270. So our math is even right. Put the uh, cover back on and... All right, there it is. Cover's back on. Uh, cooling fan blower's back on. This gets uh, hooked up inside the vehicle. And this doesn't get hooked up until, or that doesn't get put on until, you know, we're completely safe and ready to go. What you may not know is right up here, there's a set of contacts at the top. It just lets the uh, system know if this is gone. So it's just one of those built-in safeties. All right, guys. We're going to hope for the best. If you have any questions, uh... You know what to do. All right, guys, so there you have it. A quick little video about how to charge a hybrid traction battery. This is a Honda, no, this is a Kia Optima. Let's see what year it is. It's a Kia Optima hybrid, 2012. Uh, we'll put the battery in. Hopefully, you get an update. Don't look at that battery. Okay. I'm not saying I did it, but somebody did it putting it back on and uh, shorted this cell together because they put it on, I think like that, instead of like that. So it was a direct short on, on those terminals. And so that battery bulged. I think it's fair to say that this one got damaged and the one next to it would have got damaged from the heat. And all the dust on there is just uh, from a fire extinguisher. So that's not me. I didn't do that. Honda Optima. Why do I keep saying Honda? That's how you... And that's how you charge a Kia, Kia Optima traction hybrid battery. Lithium ion. It's nine 30-volt cells for a total of 270 volts DC. Bye, guys.